So let's talk about this required practical all to do with chemical testing. Well, what's it all about? Well, you have a solution of a chemical like so, but looking at it, you really can't tell what it actually is. It could basically be anything. A lot of things in, in chemistry make for a colorless solution. But in this particular required practical, it is going to be a solution of some sort of ionic compound. And the aim of the game is to try and work out which ionic compound is it. It could be something like um, sodium chloride, for example, table salt. Or it could be something like um, potassium sulfate. Now, sometimes with solutions of chemicals in science, you get a, you get a clue as to what they are from their colour. But unfortunately, both of these both make a colourless solution. So that's no good. If you want to know what's in that solution, you're going to have to do some chemical tests. So you've got to do this in two stages, really. Stage one, you've got to work out what the metal uh, cation is. So is it sodium or potassium or something else? And then job number two, you've got to work out what the non-metal anion is. And that's this bit over here. That's the chloride, sulfate, carbonate. What, you know, what exactly is it? So you've got to take this in two stages. So we're going to start off by looking at the metal cation and then we'll move on to the non-metal anion stuff a little bit later. So we'll start off with the most visual of the tests. It is the flame tests. So what you do is you get a sample of your solution on a, on a splint or in a, some people use a spray gun for extra dramatic effect. And you introduce this chemical into a blue Bunsen burner flame and it changes the color of the flame. Now, there is a reason why it does that, but that's for the, the next video. That's not just for now. So let's just uh, take it from me that it does change the color. And there are characteristic colors that it goes. So for example, sodium makes it go this yellow color and something like copper will make a flame turn green. Potassium makes it turn lilac. Now I'm just gonna write that word down because it's like a sort of a, a pinky purpley color, so lilac. And lithium will make a flame uh, turn red. Oops, I was about to write red there. Will make it turn red. And calcium will make it turn like a like a yellow red color. I know what I'm going to do. Calcium. No, that looks terrible. Calcium will make it turn a yellow red color. You just have to use your imagination there. Okay. Unfortunately, that does not work for every chemical. You see, for every metal cation you have to use a different test if it's not one of those. So it could be you put your sample into the flame and it doesn't go any of those colors. So you need to try a different approach. You are gonna use a chemical which we know from previous videos, sodium hydroxide. And then what you do with your sodium hydroxide is you get a, a test tube and then you put your sodium hydroxide in and then you put your uh, mystery solution in, in as well, and it will form a precipitate, which if you remember, is you form a solid. So you form little specks of a solid inside. And again, the color is characteristic and it tells you um, what is in it. So let's uh, have a quick look through um, calcium. So if it's got calcium ions in it, will turn, uh, will produce a white precipitate. Uh, magnesium ions, also a white precipitate. Aluminium, well that makes a white precipitate, but then that re-dissolves. If you keep adding 
more sodium hydroxide, eventually it re-dissolves. And that's quite a handy little test because if you add uh, your sodium hydroxide to the tube and it forms a white precipitate, well, that only narrows it down to one of those three. But then if you add more sodium hydroxide and it re-dissolves and the solution goes colorless again, well, you know it was aluminium. Uh, copper forms a blue precipitate. So little specks of a blue solid. And um, iron two, well, that forms a green precipitate. And that tells you um, essentially what charge the ion is in in a in a salt. So that would be that would be an Fe two plus ion hanging around. But science being science, it's never that simple because there is another sort of ion. There is iron three, so essentially Fe three plus, which makes for a brown precipitate. So you've got these characteristic colours again. So what might this reaction look like? Well, let's say that my mystery solution was something like copper sulfate. So Cu, what color shall sulfur be? Sulfur's yellow, let's do sulfur. SO4. And then you react that with some um, sodium hydroxide. So we'll have NaO, uh, what color should that be? H, there we go, perfect. And then, well, what's that going to make? That is going to make sodium sulfate, Na2, SO4. And then that is also going to make some uh, copper hydroxide. So that would be, what colors they use for that? Cu, and we'll have some open brackets, O, H, Two. Perfect. Now you could probably see straight away just by looking at the sodiums that this is not balanced. So let's just do that quickly before I talk any further. Put a little two there. So this here is my, well, I can't really call it a mystery solution because I've told you, <laughs> told you what it is, but my mystery solution. And you've added it to some sodium hydroxide. Well, what have you got? This here, this sodium sulfate, that is a soluble salt that is not going to do anything especially interesting. But this here, this is insoluble, this copper hydroxide, and it will make a blue precipitate. Okay, so a combination of this sodium hydroxide test and the flame testing should reveal to you uh, what metal cation it is that is in your mystery solution. But what about the non-metal part? So let's say you've worked out it's copper. Well, copper what? Sulfate, carbonate, chloride? And that's where you need a separate battery of tests. So what you do in this particular type case is you can use some sulfuric acid to test for carbonates. So really what you are searching for is a CO3 2 minus ions. Because when you have your solution, let's say you had some um, sodium carbonate like this, it would then split up into two ions. You'd have Actually, I should do sodium in a color, Na plus. And you'd have two lots of those. And then you would have your CO3, two minus ions hanging around as well. So these are your non-metal parts that you are looking for. And to do this, you just simply add an acid. It's not even really important which one. And if it is a positive result, so if it is indeed there, it will fizz. Why will it fizz? Well, because what you have in an acid is you have your H plus ions, which we've talked about that in a previous video. 
and then it reacts with your carbonate ions CO3 2 minus and that makes H2O and CO2 and it's the CO2 which gives it its fizz Oh, hang on a second, that isn't bal quite balanced down at the bottom. Let's just balance that really quickly by putting a little two just there. That's balanced up perfect now. So, positive test for carbonates, it fizzes. Okay, well, what if it is not a carbonate? What if it is something else? What if it's not like, oops, sodium carbonate? What if it's something like sodium chloride? How would you go about testing for that? Well, it's a different test. This test here is for halides. So we are talking about your your Cl minus ions, we're talking about your um, Br minus ions, we're talking about your uh, I, I, I ions, chloride ions, bromide ions and iodide ions. So you were looking for stuff from group 7 essentially. So what you do to your mystery solution is step number one, you add an acid. Why do you add an acid? Well, this test is quite sensitive to these carbonate ion things. So what you do is you add an acid and then that removes any carbonate ions. Because if they were floating around as well, well, that would uh, ruin your experiment. Then you add silver nitrate solution. Okay, and what results would you get? Well, if it is a chloride ion, it turns white. I don't know why I've written white and purple. It's, there we go, white. If it is a, a bromide ion, it will turn what is described as a cream color. And if it is um, an iodide ion, uh, then it turns that color, which is yellow. So again, characteristic colors, chloride white, bromide cream, iodide yellow. So let's contextualize that by showing a real example. Let's say that I had some um, sodium chloride solution. So that would make the ions uh, Na plus and Cl minus. Now remember this test is looking for the presence of halides. So what go what happens? So I've got my NaCl, NaCl, and it reacts with silver nitrate, uh, nitrogen, yeah, nitrogen can be blue, silver nitrate solution. So what happens? Well, it forms NaNO3, and it also forms AgCl. Now this here, that is a soluble salt, colorless too, so that's a bit boring, you're not going to see that. But this one here, this is a precipitate, it is a solid that you have formed. And this particular precipitate, this sodium chloride, is white. So what have we looked at so far? Well, you can test to see if there are any carbonate ions hanging around by dropping in some acid. You can test to see if there are any halide ions hanging around by dropping in some acid and then adding silver nitrate. But what if it's not those? Well, the, the last test that we really need to be familiar with is looking for, oops. I think I've overshot my overshot my space here. Let's, there we go, oops, let's move you guys out of the way. There we go. Let's move you up and away, perfect, right. So you can test for sulfate ions. 
So sulfate being, I guess sulfur should be yellow, SO4 to minus. So how do you test for these sulfate ions then? Well, again, step number one is you add an acid and that removes, oops, removes any carbonate ions. Because again, they will provide competition for this reaction and will make it go wrong. You then add barium chloride solution. And if there is indeed a sulfate ion present or sulfate ions present, it will form a white, no, <laughs> it will form a white precipitate. Okay, so what's going on actually going on with the chemistry? Well, let's say I had my barium chloride, so that's BaCl2, and I reacted it with some sodium sulfate like so so this here this here is our mystery solution so we'll just have to pretend that we don't know that this is going to give a positive reaction well this makes sodium ions and this part here the non-metal part makes sulfate ions so this is this is what we're testing for so you've added your barium chloride to your sodium sulfate, and that makes barium, oops, BA for barium, barium sulfate, like so. And it also makes some sodium chloride, NaCl. Obviously that needs a little bit of balancing the old sodiums and the chlorines, so I'll just pop a quick two there. Now this one, the sodium chloride, is a soluble salt. That's not especially interesting, but this one here, this is insoluble. It forms a precipitate, and the color of that precipitate is white. So what you do is you use one of these three tests, your uh, test for um, uh, carbonates, you test for halides, you test for sulfates, and that should hopefully tell you what the non-metal part of your salt is. Thanks very much.